Hello YouTube. So today we're going to be converting our normal data set into a standard normal distribution. Um, so this is kind of a tutorial on how to do some conversions and we'll do about uh, four practice problems. So one thing you need to know is about the z-score. Um, if you didn't see the, my previous video on the uh, standard normal distribution kind of introduction and basic sort of thing, uh, you'll learn at what you'll kind of see what a z-score is. Um, but it's kind of a standard way, a uniform way that statisticians use to kind of make their data set see if it's really a standard normal or a normal distribution, and then they can evaluate the data accordingly. So this is the formula uh, to calculate that z-score, and pretty much you just take your data set or your data value and uh, you subtract it from the mean, so the difference between the set or the point and the mean, and you divide it by the standard deviation, and that is the z-score. So here's an example. So y is normally distributed uh, with a mu or a mean of 11 and a standard deviation of 2. So notice how this is a y here, and we're going to try to convert it to the standard normal, which involves a z. So we use that z-score formula here, and our values we'd simply take are the 10 and the 12 for our y. So you'd have 10 minus the mu, which was 11, is given, divided by the standard deviation, which is 2. You also have 12 minus uh, for the difference between the standard deviation, which is 11, over 2. Now, those values are the z values, and that's pretty much what this or this is our, the conversion process. And then once we do the conversion, okay, so now we look at this table here. And what this table tells us is what the z values are. And our z value was 1 half and negative 1 half, so 0.5. So this is showing there's a standard normal table. There's tons of them. Um, this is one I like. Um, some standard normal tables go all the way up to z, but I like how this one starts from 0 or the mean and goes to z. It just makes uh, calculations simpler when it comes to more specific stuff. Um, so let's look for 1 half, which is 0. 0.5. So you go to 0. 0.5 there, and then the tenth place and hundred or the hundredth place is 0. So you have 0. 0. 0.1915. 0. 0.1915. Um, so that represents the area between the mean and our z value. Um, so that represents that shaded area right there. Um, so if we want to find it from negative 0.5 to 0.5, you simply double it since this right here is your halfway point. And then you get this entire area under here. Um, and remember we said that uh, looking at the value, we got, I believe, those 1.1915. And then that means that this area, since it's due to symmetry, is also 1.9.1915. Um, so then you add those two up, and you'd get 0 0.38. And that's another way of saying that the probability of falling in between those two values is 38%. Okay, so I hope that helped pretty much what we did was we converted our um, our normal distribution into a standard normal distribution by using the z-score formula. And then from there, we used our table to calculate the probability of falling between those two values. So we're going to have the same conditions. Um, mu is 11 and standard deviation or sigma is 2. And now we're just going to find it between 6 and 10. So we start with the conversion. So you have y is your 6, so 6 minus the standard deviation, or sorry, minus the mu, or the mean, minus 11 over the standard deviation, which is 2. And then you have 10 minus the mean over the standard deviation. And that's our z value in between there. So now that you do the math, you should get negative 2.5 and a negative 1 half. So we're looking for the probability of falling in between that range. So one thing we want to start off with, now that we have our con converted our normal distribution into a standard normal distribution, let's look at the one that's closest to zero, and that's negative one half. Um, so if we look at our table for one half or 0.5, we again have that 
uh, 1, 5. So we know that's the area for that part, but what about um, negative 0.25? So let's go to 0.25. So here's 0.25, and there's that value as well, 0.4938. So I filled in the negative 1 half version, so 0.1915. But if we want to fill in the 0.25, which is like 0.49 something, I want to show what that represents. That represents the stuff shaded in blue as well as the value up to that value. So that value was 0.4938. So since they're overlapping, uh, the yellow and the blue are overlapping, you want to find only the area that's in between the two red here. So we're only interested in what's now being shaded in red. Um, to simply find that, you just take the larger one minus the smaller one, get the difference, and you subtract out the value, and you get 0 0.3023, which represents the value of having, or the probability of falling into that range of 30.23%. Remember that area in this case for what these kind of problems represents the probability, and that's the answer to this question right here. Okay, so got another one here. Uh, so the probability that it is greater than 13.24. So we use our z-score, and remember our z-score, this formula pretty much comes from like how many standard deviations are we away from the mean kind of idea. Um, so we go back here and we use the formula. So we have our y which is 13.24 minus the mean, which is 11, over the standard deviation, which is 2. And we end up getting our z value, because that's now converted into z using that formula in the z-score. So where z is greater than or equal to 1.12. And that's our probability of what we're looking for. So we come over here, and we're like, okay, we got 1.12 about right here. Um, Let's go and figure out where that is, uh, but first let's figure out what are, what are they asking exactly. They want the area that's over here, right? So it has to be greater than 1.12. So we go to our table and we look for 1.12, so we got 1 point, uh, oops, we got 1.1 here, and then we gotta look for the 2, which is there, and where they intersect is right here. So 0 0.3686, 0 0.3686. So what's that number represent? Well, that's actually the area that's shaded here. That's 0 0.386, 0 0.3686, I think. Yeah. So then if we want to find this area, we know that this half is 0 0.5, and since symmetrical, symmetric, that this half is also 0 0.5. Um, so all you got to do is take 0 0.5 minus the um, 30... 836.3686, I can say numbers, um, and then that answer you get would be with simply taking the difference would be 0 0.1314. And that is your answer to the shaded region here. So the probability of having a z value greater than 1.12 is 13.14%. Okay, last one, hang in there. So we have zero here to set up, so we're looking, we got to convert to z again. So using the z-score formula, we take 7.62 minus our, our mu, which is 11, over the standard deviation, which is 2, and that's our new probability. Um, well, let me do this. Probability of z that is greater than and equal to, if you do your calculations, you would get negative 1.69. Okay, so that's our z value we're looking for. So negative 1.69 is left of 0 because it's negative, and it would fall over here. So we are looking for to be on which side, the left or the right? Well, since it is greater than negative 1.69, we're looking for everything all over here. So that's what we're looking for. How do we get that exactly? Well. Again, remember that since due to symmetry being this a standard being a standard normal distribution, this is 0.5. We know that for a fact. 
So if we can find what the area is here, we simply add to 0.5. So we look at the table, and our z-value is negative 1.69. So let's look at positive 1.69, because they have the same percent of um, area. So 1.69, 1, 1. 1.6 is here. And we got to go way over here for 1.69, and it's 0. 0.4545. 0.4545 is here. 0.4545. And that is uh, that area there. So if we want to find everything, including what's everything to the right, you simply add those two numbers together. So 0. 0.5, I can write numbers, 0. 0.5 plus 0. 0.4545. And obviously this is not drawn to scale. And the answer is 0 0.9545, which means uh, the, sum, the percent is 95.45% if you wanted to find a value within that range there. Okay, hope this helped with practicing. I mean, practice makes perfect kind of thing. So um, hopefully you understood what's been going on in the beginning. If you watched the video before, that should help. If you didn't, maybe you want to check it out. Um, to see what this z-score and transforming into the standard normal distribution is all about. Thanks for watching.